Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the previous video, we talked about how to diagnose and treat Staph aureus infections. Today, we have some great mnemonics. So in video number four, we talked about the characteristics of Staph aureus. Video number five was about diseases of Staph aureus. Video six was how to diagnose and treat Staph aureus. Today is video seven, mnemonics on Staph aureus. As you know, microbes are bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites. Speaking of bacteria, they could be gram-positive or gram-negative. If it's gram-positive, could be cocci or rods. Staphylococcus aureus is a gram-positive cocci. Catalase, positive. Coagulase, positive. Spherical, lacking endospores. This video will be very quick. If you need detailed discussion, check out the previous videos, please. We will divide this video into three parts. Part one, mnemonics related to the characteristics of Staph aureus. Part two, mnemonics about diseases caused by Staph aureus. And third, mnemonics with regards to treatment of Staph aureus. First, characteristics. As you know, Staph aureus has many virulence factors, including structural components, toxins, and enzymes. The structural components are the capsule, the slimy layer, peptidoglycan, tocoic acid, and protein A. The toxins are cytotoxins, exfoliative toxins, enterotoxins, and toxic shock syndrome toxin number one. The enzymes of Staph aureus are coagulase, hyaluronidase, fibrinolysin, lipase, and nuclease. Of course, nuclease breaks down the DNA because in the nucleus, lipase breaks down lipids, Fibrinolysin breaks down fibrin and coagulase converts fibrin to fibrin to coagulate. Mnemonics about the cell wall. It's peptidoglycan. Here's the P, here's the N. Let's start with the N because the peptidoglycan is made of N-acetylmuramic acid and N-acetylglucosamine. Next to the P, peptidoglycan is made of peptide side chains and then we cross-link them with sugar backbone. This was the structure. How about the function? Why do we need peptidoglycan? It provides rigid support. It prevents phagocytosis. It protects against osmotic damage, provides a surface for adhesion proteins. But it can also be pyrogenic. What does pyrox mean? Oh, fire, heat. What do you mean? I mean, I'm gonna increase release of interleukin-1, which will stimulate my hypothalamus to cause fever. It will also help the neutrophils proliferate. That's why you get fever and leukocytosis. Next, when it comes to Staph aureus toxins, we have exfoliative toxins, for example. Exfoliative toxins are either exfoliative toxin A and exfoliative toxin B. Exfoliative toxin A is heat stable, but exfoliative toxin B is lay bile. Next, Staph aureus enterotoxins. We have enterotoxin A and enterotoxin B. Of course, the word entero means enteric, intestinal, your intestines. A causes food poisoning, B causes bowel pseudomembranous colitis how about a that's the regular food poisoning which means watery diarrhea caused by eating potato salad ham salted pork banana pudding custard pastries ice cream and others when these food are contaminated with introduction a you will have the symptoms of staph gastroenteritis which resolve on their own within 24 hours and then there are general three ends that you should learn about Staph aureus. Number one, it loves to grow in sodium chloride. Sodium chloride does not kill Staph. Next, many members of the general population have Staph aureus colonizing their nasopharynx. Moreover, Staph aureus has no animal reservoir. Let's talk about enzymes. Coagulase is one of them. Why do you call it coagulase? Because it coagulates the blood. Oh, it forms a clot? Absolutely. And then for coagulase, just remember the vowels. A, it's one of the adhesion proteins. E, it's an enzyme. I, I can use it as an identification test, a biochemical test to find the coagulase. And if I find the coagulase, I can diagnose Staph aureus as opposed to Staph epidermidis and Staph saprophyticus because the latter two are coagulase negative. How about the O? It's coagulase, covalently bound to the peptidoglycan cell wall of the bacteria and it floats in the plasma, reacts with globulin plasma factor, 
forming staphylothrombin, which will cause a thrombosis. If you are coagulase positive, you will be loculated and aggregated and localized in a narrow area. Folliculitis, bullae, furuncle, carbuncle, abscess, blister, and pitigo, all of them are localized in a certain location. Versus streptococcus pyogenes, which is coagulase negative, it cannot localize itself because it cannot make clots, therefore it will spread in the form of sepsis, cellulitis, necrotizing, fasciitis, erysipelas, etc. Speaking of loculations, staph aureus can lead to pleural effusion. They will be exudative effusion with lots of loculations. I have a video on the different types of pleural effusions in my pulmonology playlist. Let's review the enzymes. Coagulase because it coagulates. Hyaluronidase because it causes hydrolysis of hyaluronic acid which is part of my connective tissue and this is how staph aureus was able to dig deeper into the deep fascia sometimes especially in cases of carbuncles and carbuncles can spread deeper causing bacteremia fibrin lysin lysis of fibrin this is also known as staphylokinase not to be confused with streptokinase streptokinase will belong to strept not staph lipase breaks down the lipid nuclease breaks down the nucleus next mnemonics for the diseases of staph aureus staph aureus can cause staph scalded skin syndrome everything here is two ss multiplied by two exfoliative toxin a and B, kid with skin, peeling and disquamation, bully and blisters, B and B. No inflammation, no cytolysis. If I biopsy the lesion, no bacteria and leukocytosis. Why not? Because SSSS is caused by a toxin, not by Staph aureus herself. Everything here is too. The disease is too benign in children, but too severe in adults because they will be immunocompromised. When it heals, it leaves no scarring, no fibrosis. Don't forget that it all started with perioral erythema. Two days later, you have staph scalded skin syndrome that gives you the positive Nikolsky sign, which means when you press on them lightly, chew, they rupture and peel the skin. Staph scalded skin syndrome mnemonics, the B and P mnemonic. Oh, by the way, don't forget that bullus impetigo is a localized version of staph scalded skin syndrome. Really? Yeah, really. Let's talk about bullus impetigo. It's a baby, peribuccal erythema, and then it's gonna spread to the entire body peeling the skin, disquamating the skin, giving me the positive Nikolsky sign, bully and blisters all over the body. B is the second layer of the alphabet. So let's talk about staph scalded skin syndrome, two and two, exploitative toxin, A and B, peeling and disquamation, no inflammation, no cytolysis, no bacteria, no leukocytosis. In children, it's too benign. It's gonna resolve on its own in seven to 10 days, thanks to antibody neutralization. When it heals, it leaves no scarring, no fibrosis. Death might happen in 2% of patients due to secondary bacterial infections. If this happens in adults, it's very rare by the way, you have to be immunocompromised to get it. It will be too rare, but too severe and too deadly. Do you remember the story of the two kids with honey crusting lesions on the skin? Yes, the first one had non-bullous impetigo, the second one had bullous impetigo. Non-bullous, papule and pustules. Bullous has bully and blisters. Non-bullous could be caused by staph or strept. Bullous has to be staph aureus. Non-bullous could be treated topically or systemically. Bullous has to be treated systemically. Bullous impetigo, usually young. It's a localized form of staph scalded skin syndrome. Is it staph or strept? Only staph. All of the staphs? No, not all types of staphs only special forms of staph. Is it generalized all over the body? No, it's not. Does the erythema extend beyond the border of the blister? No, it does not. How about Nikolsky? Is it Nikolsky positive? No, it's not. It's Nikolsky negative. If I culture the blister, you will see staph aureus there. Next, a mnemonic on staph skin infections. Remember, staph is coagulase positive. And that's why your lesions are confined and localized. I can start with an infection of one of my hair follicles or one of my eyelashes. That's folliculitis or sty, aka hordulum. And then if it extends, it becomes furuncle, aka boil. These boils can coalesce together 
and carve their way deeper into my body, deeper into my skin. And then when they cause bacteremia, I get chills, fever, leukocytosis with multiple sinus tracts visible on my skin. That's the story of a complicated carbuncle. Then a septic embolus made of staph is gonna reach my blood. We call this pyemia. And then I can reach target organs in the heart, acute bacteria endocarditis, in the lungs, lung abscess, and empyema, in the brain, brain abscess, encephalitis, meningitis, you name it. Mnemonics on the treatment. If it is sans stev, give ox, clocks, diclox, and nav. But if stev aureus is resistant, aka MRSA, well, it depends. You have oral therapy and intravenous therapy. How do you remember it? Medicosis? Here is how I remember it. Linezolid is always number three. Okay. We start here, top left with a tetracycline, which is doxycycline. We end it down and to the right with another tetracycline. This time it's tiger cycline. And then let's memorize one and two because they rhyme together. Doxycycline, clindamycin. How about the intravenous? Vancomycin, daptomycin. These two are cousins. Just like your parents. Oh, I'm sorry, too far. Take it easy, medicosis. Calm down. Yes, ma'am. So now I memorized one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Now four is different. If it's oral, add TMP SMX. If it is intravenous, that's tiger cycling. When you are scrapping my skin to send the sample to the lab, make sure to scrap deep from the base of the lesion because the base has more bacteria. It is dirtier. How do bacteria gain resistant? MRSA has resistance thanks to MEC-A. Versa has resistant thanks to Van A. If you have MRSA, give vancomycin. If you have Versa, give linizolid. Quiz time. You have a 26-year-old patient with acute red eye and there is discharge. Day and night, there is discharge. The discharge is leaving crusting on my eyes, especially at the corners of the eyes. And after I wipe it, it reappears. Discharge, discharge, discharge. Family members have similar symptoms. What's the diagnosis, please? And what is the causative agent? Let me know the answers in the comments. You'll find the correct answer in the next video. Let's review Staph aureus from Picmonic. Characteristics first. Staph aureus, here is a staph, here is oreo. It's a gram positive, here is the angel. Coccus, here is spherical eyes. Coagulase positive, positive clogs. Catalase positive, positive cat. Virulence factors include protein A, which inhibits phagocytosis. Staph aureus is beta hemolytic. Don't forget that MRSA is resistant because it alters the penicillin binding protein so that the penicillin cannot bind the receptor on the Staph aureus. Next, diseases caused by Staph aureus, skin infections, abscesses, and empitigo. Here's the tiger. Osteomyelitis can happen, pneumonia and pleural effusion, acute bacterial endocarditis. These are the diseases caused by the bacteria itself. How about diseases caused by the toxin? I can get staph scalded skin syndrome by the exfoliative toxin. I can get staph food poisoning by the enterotoxin. And I can get toxic shock syndrome by the toxic shock syndrome toxin number one. In the order of things, after you learn microbiology, you should master pharmacology. You can download my antibiotics videos from my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com to learn about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. Learn why clindamycin is a Catholic nun, only at medicosis. I also have an acid-base imbalance course on my website, a cardiac pharmacology course, renal physiology course, and more. And for a very limited time, you can get a 30% discount towards any course on my website. Just use promo code pancreas at checkout. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.